How you going? Gary here from Platform One Lane RFC. As I sit here at the uh, Palms Cafe, I think I hear a train coming. FEC's JV40-2, number 422. We'll shortly be getting into a layout update. It's been a while, it's about time. So it's been some time since i done a layout update. I think the last one may have been April. I don't think I've done anything in May, June or July, so apologies for that. Um, but, you know, work and life gets in the way. But Sydney's been in lockdown for the last couple of weeks, you know, due to this new strain of uh, coronavirus. So I've had a few early days and uh, decided to use that time to work on the railway. I've been doing a little bit kit bashing, scratch building, and a little bit of scenery detail. Um, one of the buildings that I scratch built is from where I filmed the opening sequence to this uh, this update. It's the uh, what I or what I call the Palms Cafe. I'll just pan around to the Palms Cafe. I searched on Google Street View and came across a cafe in Miami. Now, it was a similar shape to this, although you can see that door in the middle there beside the right-hand palm, that section was reversed. So you can imagine that uh, the instep here was actually on the other side. It did have steel grates up around the front walls, what have you. I decided to leave them out because it did uh, cause a bit of a view blocker. It was simply scratch built, you know, after I drew up a plan, worked out the area that I had to, or the size of the area I had to work with, which isn't that big. This whole building here measures around about four by four and a half inches. So pretty much from the footpath here to the back of the path over here and the width itself, you know, the building width itself over the roof line, you could say. Um, so it's only, it's only a very small building. Now I've added a few details, as you can see the, the, uh, the stools and the tables in there. Um, they've been scratch built out of styrene. Uh, threw a couple of newspapers in there on top of the tables that you can probably see. Air conditioner on top, yep, once again. 20 or 30 thousand styrene, uh, a few little detailing parts. I'm pretty sure, or I am sure, that the grate here inside the air conditioning box was out of a, uh, one of those fire escape kits that you put on the side of the wallless buildings. So a little square of that was cut out. It's on both sides to represent the, uh, you could say, the, the cooling or the, the intake. From what I've learned from other guys on some of the Facebook groups is the front here would have been the intake and that would have been to expel any heat with the air conditioning motors. The back of the yard has also been detailed up. I'll just pan around a bit further. Um, as you can see, some corrugated iron fencing there. Now that's made out of styrene and corrugated card that I purchased here in Australia. The waste bin you see there, that's another little scratch built item. Made out of styrene, just pieced together. A little bit of channel here for where the tines of the truck pick the box up. And as you can see, little bits of uh, brown paper, off-white paper, a, uh, a cardboard box there, you know, a fruit box over the side here, has been added to the scene there. I'll uh, post up a couple of photos of the, uh, the back of the scene and some of the detail. It's on the back of the building. I won't move the camera right now, but I'll post up a photo. You'll see the little uh, toilet I also scratch built. As we pan back, a couple of new vehicle additions to the layout. I'll just turn them sideways. 
CSX, I think it's a F-150. And uh, what do I call the chef's car? Now, that car would normally be parked in the uh, the rear car park beside the skip bin. Looks like the chef's car, all right, you know, out of his little business. He's got himself a little retro car there, so nice to see. Further around the layout, up the other end there, you know, I've just tidied up a little bit of scenery along here, added another little section of fence there, just to break off from the railway gates, or the railway, uh, rail side gates, I should say, to the uh, industrial complex here. Um, as you can see there, what I do have to do, that I haven't done, is still put a back on the building here. Now, as you know, that's a lift out section, so I can fold these hinges over here, uh, fold the layout up over itself. More trash is being added alongside the rail corridor. And some of you may recall one of my last videos where I lifted up the points and relayed them. Originally I had uh, Pico set track points in there and what I found is uh, the larger wagons such as, you see that, the 60 foot TTX, um, didn't really negotiate the uh, tighter radius of the set track points. So they came out and replaced with Pico SL91 and SL92 small points, which I find that those wagons, even the uh, SD60M, that uh, that runs through the points quite smoothly now, where even this logo didn't run through the set track points. So we'll head down to the other end of the layout and uh, I'll show you the other structure that I completed and some of the scenery I'll put back in place. Okay, I'll just pan around to the other building that I uh, kit bashed. Now this little building here is, or has been kit bashed out of a piece or two pieces from the uh, uh, Walder's Red Wing Mill kit. That kit itself I kit bashed into a larger building for my other layout in the, uh, the other train room. So basically these two sections here and these three sections on the other side here have been uh, pieced together, formed up, made that facade, a um, little bit of styrene added here, styrene, actually here in the, uh, the pipe here is actually sprue left over, from a, uh, left over from one of the kits. So I've just added those things, you know, on top up here, you know, there's three little roof details. So that was all pieced together, painted up, your stairs added, which the stairs are just made out of card there because I didn't have any stairs to, to suit the model. As you can see, that door there is really only a uh, emergency escape rather than an entry, you know, because it leads straight down the rail side. Further down, you can see I've had extended the fence, a few more palms being placed in and just uh, all the ground scatters placed back up against the building there. So um, that's, that's come on really nice. I'm quite pleased with how that's... Uh, now that's progressed you know it does create a bit of a view block because this end of the layout right here is basically it the end of the layout i have considered extending maybe all three rails here actually this one here i want to put a a haze bumper on the end um because that'd be the the full length of that siding the middle line as you know is the through line and uh this outer line well i can continue that on a little bit further but um, I haven't had any plans for that yet. What else have I been working on? Well, I'll just show you around the other side of the, uh, the layout here. And you'll see the tank and the uh, little hard stand area that I put in beside this new, this new factory that I put in here, which is right behind that chain link fence there you can see in the centre of the screen. So you can see here in the centre of the uh, picture is one of the tanks that I put in the position. That's from the uh, Walders Industrial Tank Set. Uh, nothing too big there, but uh, just something to add some detail to it. I really should add some piping maybe from the bottom on here that runs up and maybe through to the factory there, the industrial complex. As you can see, I put a bung around the bottom of the tank. Any chemical uh, tank these days generally have a bung around them. And then that little hard stand area, which you can see directly in the center of the screen here. Basically where trucks can back up to the, back up to the tank and uh, do their refills, what have you. 
The uh, the rest of that yard there, I will detail it with a few bits of, you know, just uh, industrial junk, maybe a few old uh, 44 gallon drums, rusty ones, perhaps like this one right here. I decided to return the fence on the corner here where the palm tree is to bring it back out to the layout because you do have the rail corridor that runs through the back here. Now when I did lift up the points and replace them with the SL9192s, 90 this particular point that's sitting in behind here, I decided to leave as a set track point. I didn't need to really rip that out because this siding here that comes across through here is too short to park a wagon on. I decided to leave that in. As you're aware, a lot of uh, a lot of industrial siding, especially in the cities and all that, had fairly tight radius curves, points and that. So I decided to leave that one there. I also left the other set track point in down behind the, uh, the Palms Cafe as well. One of the other things I've done is over the back here, I decided to give these silos over there a weather. I'll see if I can move this across for you guys so you can see them get a clearer picture. There they are there. Now they were painted basically a flat to me a white that I had and I've just used pastels rather than purchase uh, proper weathering powders. The old pastels come in handy, handy I should say. They haven't come up too bad I must admit. I'm pretty happy with them. They're not overly rusty. I can imagine in a uh, food industry that uh, rusty silos uh, would have to be replaced from time to time so I'll just keep them there. I must admit, I haven't bed these into the ground yet. I still need to do that. As you can see, they're still quite loose. Have manufactured the uh, pickup pipes, you know, to empty the uh, corn syrup cars. Just need to put all that into place. So once that gets done and settled in that area, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much that corner finished. Now if I pan around here a bit further, one thing I, I want to do is that lower platform edge. At the moment, it's a solid concrete wall, and what I want to do is put some joints and details in this face here. So uh, whether I just take the model out and just scribe a few lines into it and rub some weathering powders, pastels into it. That should uh, that should change the appearance there. I mean, it doesn't look too bad from where, from where I'm sitting, from where I'm standing, where you guys are looking from, but uh, I just think it'll add that little bit more detail. So that's where we're up to at the moment. A few little details to go. Still need to do a little bit of work down along uh, this side here. Running down to the fence there, down to where that white tank sits there. I've got nothing in this area here whatsoever, so a little bit of detail will we'll, uh, have to go into that as well. Anyway, I'll post up a few stills of the area for you to show you what's, what I've been working on. and. Uh, how I've been piecing these uh, kid bashes and scratch builds together. So I hope you enjoy that. One other thing that pops up on Facebook groups and uh, a couple of forums that I'm involved with is what's the difference between kit bashing and scratch building? Well, I'll start with kit bashing first. This building here, which I've uh, knocked up out of pieces left over from the Miranda's Bananas or Grocery Distributor Kit. Now I had two of them that I kit bashed previously and I had parts left over. Now sections that have been uh, knocked up together to produce this little building here. The roof itself is from another kit. I'm not sure, 100% sure where that's from. 
And if I turn the model around, you can see how I've uh, pieced different pieces together there. Where I've had a closed window, as in here, that's just another piece of the uh, model brickwork that I've glued in place. You can see, we'll just stand that up. See so just in here. So there's little tricks and do's that you can uh, that you can pick up on and learn to uh, patch things in, patch things up, to give a bespoke building for your layer. Not everything needs to look the same. Never kit bashed before, and you've got leftover parts from a kit that you, or well, you shouldn't have a leftover parts from a kit if you haven't kit bashed before. I'd advise you to to have a crack at it and produce some bespoke buildings. Now, this and the other building that I showed you earlier down on the end of the layout there, the one left uh, constructed from the Red Wing build, is kit bashed. Whereas the pink building here, as you can see, the uh, food complex, is a scratch build. If you remember back on my first few videos, I done a little piece on it, um, and where I got the inspiration from. Now I'm just gonna lift that out and show you guys that this is made from card. Nothing more but card. I'll just pan around. Now when I mean card, I mean cardboard, I don't mean styrene. So that's just been glued together. Um, the best thing I use there is PPA to glue it all together. Doors, as you can see down the end, is just a piece of foam core that's been glued in over the place, over the opening, the aperture. When you turn around this way, I'll bring bring that door into position. You can see the little door handle on there, and I just described how I done them uh, previously. You know, with the cigarette lighter, which I learned off uh, Boomer of Boomer Dioramas. Um, windows here are just printer paper, and now I've just cut cut a few pieces you know, to have the opening on the glass there. So very simple construction. Air conditioners on top, again, from a Walther's kit. So both the pink buildings, that one and the larger one, or smaller one here, and also up behind the palm trees there, the blue building, are all made from cardboard. Simple to do. If you've got yourself a sharp scalpel, a cutting mat, a ruler, a scale rule, whatever, it's uh, easily put together. So that's the difference between scratch building and uh, kit bashing. Um, I encourage you to have a go at doing, doing a bit of both. Both buildings is something that separates your layout from everybody else's. So anyway, that's our update for the week. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I'll jump on the bandwagon, give the thumbs up if you liked it, give the thumbs down if you didn't like it. I'm not going to rave on about hit the bell and all that because I've got some good subscribers there. So um, thank you very much and welcome aboard the new subscribers that we've got. I might finish up with a uh, another drive-by and uh, we'll go from there. Cheers, Gary.